Hey guys, so we are in the kitchen today and we are gonna do something a little different, experimental, I guess you could say. Um, I, when you might recall when I was cleaning out my freezer, organizing it, I came across my lemon curd that we made together this summer um, when I was trying to use up a bunch of my surplus eggs from the girls. Kind of ironic now that I have no eggs from them <laughs> and I'm gonna be using eggs from the store for this recipe, but we have our lemon curd and I had read that lemon curd freezes really well. So um, I made a bunch of it, put it in the freezer, but it's been there for like six, seven months now and really needs to get used up. But I didn't wanna make something that was kind of, I don't know, like standard lemon curd fare, like lemon bars or lemon tart or something like that. So the other thing that I have really been wanting to do is make a Danish, Danish pastry. And so I thought, well, this is perfect. I can use the lemon curd in, as the filling for the Danish pastry. So that is what we're going to do today is we are going to make Danish pastry from scratch with lemon curd filling. Uh, so this has just been thawing in the refrigerator since yesterday. I haven't opened it yet, so I don't actually know how freezing lemon curd does. We will open it together and see. But for the Danish pastry, <clears throat> I actually got even more excited about it because a couple of months ago, my mom sent me a couple of cookbooks from her collection. So this one is a Danish heritage cookbook from um, a Danish festival in Greenville, Michigan. Apparently there's a lot of Danish ancestry there. So many, many years ago, back in the sixties, they started this festival and these are all Danish recipes that have come out of that festival. And so I thought, Oh, well, this is perfect. I'll, I'll use the recipe from this cookbook. Unfortunately, there actually isn't a Danish pastry recipe in here, at least not the kind that I um, am looking for. So uh, they, what they do have, so in Denmark, a Danish pastry is actually called a uh, Wienerbrod. Brod. I'm sure I'm completely mispronouncing that. Somebody knows, tell me how to pronounce it. Um, but it's a Vienna bread um, because the original Danish pastry, apparently there was a strike of Danish bakers back in the 1800s. And so they brought in all of these Austrian bakers who made this pastry, which they had gotten from the French back in the like 1600s. So it's not really Danish at all, <laughs> but they are the ones that kind of made it famous because of these Viennese bakers that were there for a while. So. That's the history of Danish pastry. The one that's in here, um, yeah, it's not really, I mean, it has a lot of the same ingredients, but it's not really a the one I was looking for, like I said. So I went online because of course there is a plethora of recipes for Danish pastries online. And most of them are pretty similar, um, but I decided on this one from mydanishkitchen.com. And uh, yeah, I think it, it's, it's pretty much the same concept as all of the others. Um, and the thing about Danish pastry is that it is like a croissant dough or a puff pastry. So it's, you have butter in it and you fold it multiple times so you get all of those flaky layers. Um, so we are going to start on that because this needs to sit overnight after it has been initially mixed up. So we're going to start on the dough, but first we're gonna open this lemon curd, see what it looks like. I have made lemon curd many, many, many times. So I'm very familiar with it and how it should look and feel and taste. And it is looking pretty darn like exactly like I did when I put it in here. So, experiment confirmed. Lemon curd freezes very well. But let's give it a taste just to make sure. Mm. I love lemon curd. Okay, uh, so lemon curd is good to go. I'm actually gonna put that back in the fridge since we aren't going to use it until tomorrow. And we'll get started on the Danish pastry dough. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this starts out, there are a couple of different ways that you can make um, Danish pastry. The way that is um, kind of traditional is um, actually slicing the butter into thin slices and then folding the dough over it and then doing your folds and rolls, rolling and folding. Um, but the other way, uh, which this recipe does, is to mix up the butter with the flour until it's like kidney bean size pieces of butter in the flour, then add the rest of the ingredients, knead it for a bit, and then it goes into the fridge. So you still have to do the rolling and folding uh, the next day, but the this part is just a little bit easier dealing with the butter. So we are going to use that method. So first we need to start out with the butter, which is going to be one and a half cups of very cold unsalted butter. And so she actually uses a food processor, but I don't want to go get my food processor. So I'm just going to cut this into small pieces and use my normal uh, mixer for that. Luckily today, my hands are very cold, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about them melting the butter. But it is very important that the butter not melts. Um, just like with, again, a puff pastry or a croissant, um, you want the butter to, that's what gives you the flaky layers in your pastry, is the butter melting when it gets in the oven and puffing up the dough. Unlike pa puff pastry, however, this recipe, Danish pastry, as well as croissant pastry or dough, uh, uses yeast. So it does require uh, rising time as well. All right, have our butter all nice and cubed up here. And this recipe actually gives weight measurements, so we are definitely going to use those. And we need, so it says three and a half cups of flour or 480 grams. I have a feeling this is going to make a lot. <laughs> Probably could have halved this recipe, but that's okay. in here and mix it slowly so the flour doesn't go all over the place. While that is mixing, we are going to get our yeast into our warm water. Uh, let's see, where's my yeast? Four and a half teaspoons. Almost time to open up my new thing of yeast. I've actually had that yeast um, for, well, gosh, I think I opened it when we were still in Woodenville, so, uh, or in Washington, so I, that's been three years, four years almost? Crazy. Uh, so we're just gonna let this sit here and get all frothy. Good. 
good in here. Yeah, that looks good. While we're waiting for that, I am going to put the other ingredients in here, other wet ingredients in here. So we need two eggs and I believe it's a half a cup of heavy cream. And then salt and sugar. Just a half teaspoon of salt. And a quarter cup of sugar. So this dough it, by itself isn't very sweet. It's definitely the fillings um, that make it so. This looks good, all nice and dissolved. And you just add both of these in, and it says just mix until just um, together. So, not very much. And it should be a pretty sticky dough from the things I read at uh, in the other recipes. I don't think she mentions it here. Um, yeah. So she actually also adds cardamom to this recipe, but I, which I think, no, none of the other recipes I saw had that. It might be kind of a traditional ingredient, but I don't think it would go very well with lemon curd, so. We are not going to add it. All right, definitely says not to mix it very much, so there is still some dry stuff at the bottom. You can kind of see in there. Um, but I think it'll be okay because this will sit overnight and then I believe we need it. Uh, no, you don't need it. You just start doing the folding and turning. But I think we'll still easily get that all mixed in. Well, maybe I'll mix it in a little bit with my whoop, hands. This is how we are looking. So uh, now it's just gonna get covered and put in the fridge overnight. Actually, I'm probably just gonna put it in the garage because that's cold enough out there. And uh, yeah, so let me just cover this. Gonna get some of this dirty dishes out of the way here first. So this recipe and, well, actually many of them say you can just chill it for four hours. Um, but one of the recipes I looked at was the um, one on King Arthur Flowers website because I've always had really good luck with their recipes and it's very, very similar to this one. In fact, they even talk about the two methods as well. The one that's more traditional with the slicing the butter and then this one of using the food processor to mix the butter in. And um, that recipe had a ton of reviews on it, really good reviews. Um, and everybody who did not chill the dough overnight 
really regretted it. And some of them had even tried it both ways and said that it made a huge difference to put it overnight and not just a couple of hours. So I don't really want to do the whole project tonight anyway. So this will work perfectly. Let's get these last few things put away. And I will be back tomorrow, probably in the evening again, and we will do the rest of this fun recipe. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Time to get this rolled out. It uh, definitely rose some. Um, oh yeah, and it's actually puffy, but you can see, cause it was pretty small ball down in there when we put it out, so. It's nice and cold, which is what we also need. So um, this actually makes two, so I should probably explain a little bit. Um, a lot of people think of danishes as like single serving things, which you definitely can make them that way as well. Um, but this one, she actually has you doing kind of the traditional braided um, pastry. So I think I'm gonna do that. And this makes two of those and we definitely do not need two of them. But she also said that the dough freezes really well. So I am trying to decide if I should do the fold and roll and fold for both of them first before I put it in the freezer. I'm thinking, yeah, probably that's a good idea because then when it thaws, I don't have to do that yet. Okay, but I'm gonna divide it in half for right now and work with just the one so we can get it into the oven because after I do the rolling and folding, it needs to go in the fridge for 30 minutes or even up to overnight again. But I do wanna get this done today. <laughs> so uh, we'll just do the 30 minutes and uh, then get it into the oven. And while I'm waiting for the 30 minutes for that one, I can roll out the other one. So let's get busy rolling. Flour out here. She said moderately floured. And if you'll recall, this dough was pretty sticky. So we probably are going to need it. It's kind of ball here, cut it in half. You can see the little pieces of butter in there. It's perfect. All right, this one's gonna go back into the fridge for now. Since we need to do it in a rectangle, we'll kind of get it roughly in that shape here first. And you're supposed to roll it out to a 16 by 20 square, or rectangle, that's not a square. Um, I could go get a ruler. I don't really want to. So we're just going to roll it out really well. She doesn't say that you need to uh, chill it in between each of the folds, which usually you do for these kinds of uh, layered doughs. So we'll see how warm the dough gets after I finish the first one. And I might go, I might chill it for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so in between each one. All right, does that look like 16 by 20 to you? No? No, probably not. There we go. All right, so the first fold is, yeah, I should have put a little more flour down in thirds.
that. And then she said do a quarter turn. And I don't know why you need to do the turn. And then fold it into thirds again. And then you roll it out. All right, I'm gonna do one more roll and then I am gonna put it back in the fridge for a bit. dough is nice and soft even though it's really cold that's kind of cool and then yeah you're just we're just gonna roll it back out again to another 16 by 20 I don't know if you can see the butter shards in here exactly what we want So I have made croissants before, and I think I mentioned that the biggest difference between puff pastry and croissants and Danish dough is that it, they are leavened with yeast. Um, but then the difference that I can tell between a croissant dough and a this Danish dough, or Vienna bread dough, is that this one uses the eggs and cream. I can't remember if croissants use milk. They definitely don't have egg in them. Um, so that seems to be the biggest difference between these two doughs. All right, I think that's good. extra flour in here so all right I'm going to wrap this in saran wrap and put it in the fridge for 10 minutes and then we'll do our next one so we need to do this two more times um, so I think I'll rest it in the fridge in between both these next times One of the fun things about having gone and looked through this cookbook is there's actually all kinds of really cool recipes in here that I definitely want to try. Um, most of them are in, they're actually like the main dishes and casseroles and stuff. They have some potato ones that sound amazing. Where? And eggs and mustard sauce. I mean, there definitely some of them are a little out there. <laughs> uh, pickled herring, mm, maybe not so much. Oh, they have homemade sausage. Huh. Ground pork, salt, pepper, ground allspice, thyme, or sage, and uh, salad oil. This is very old cookbook, obviously, um, and so they use interesting terms for some of the ingredients and like often instead of calling for butter they call for margarine um <clears throat> that was the time when margarine was very much in use yeah eel in aspic mm, maybe not <laughs> but there's definitely some really interesting ones and then the other cool thing she sent me so i don't think i mentioned so her side of the family is um Danish. They have uh, Danish ancestry. And um, my dad's side of the family has Hungarian ancestry. 
And she also had sent me a cookbook from that's that's all Hungarian recipes. And it's actually from my great aunt V, I believe. And she has little notes in there and it's just very, very fun. And there's some really cool recipes in there too. So I think that's gonna be an upcoming project. It's maybe a Danish Danish meal and a Hungarian meal. That'd be fun. All right. Uh, so yeah, eight-ish minutes and then we'll go back to rolling. I've already done the second fold on this and look at how puffy it is. It's definitely rising um, even in the cold fridge. So this last one, I actually let it sit in the fridge for about 20 minutes because um, it was a little too warm after my last fold. So I wanted to get it a little bit extra time. All right, one last fold here. Oh, cat hairs, oh my goodness. They are everywhere in this house. It also has definitely gotten uh, harder to roll out the more folds that I've done. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way or not, but even with the rest, um, yeah, it's just not, it springs back quite a bit more. It, even though it is um, springing back and it's harder to roll, it still is just this beautiful soft dough. Gorgeous. Okay, so now it needs to sit in the refrigerator for 30 minutes before we do the final rollout and the braid. Um, I think that I need to get a bigger piece of plastic though because, like I said, it is rising in the refrigerator and I think it will <laughs> split that one. I think it is. All right, here we go. Last little rest in the fridge. And actually, since we have now half an hour, I will start getting this one rolled out. Yeah, see how much easier this is to roll out? That's so crazy. I'm going to let this one, I'm not going to do the next roll out yet. I will let this one rest in the fridge as well. Right, I'm going to do one more really quick uh, fold, roll and fold on the second uh, dough. And then we are ready to get started on the braiding for the final roll on the braiding and filling of our actual pastry, which is very exciting. So let me know, have you guys ever tried the different kinds of, what are these called? Laminated doughs. And if so, are you, were they hard? Did you find them hard? Or did you find them surprisingly easy? Because like they're, to me, 
they seem very um, like work intensive, but they're not necessarily difficult. It's just a lot of steps and waiting for the most part. So, um, and that was the way I felt with uh, when I made the croissant dough as well. Actually, I made croissants and I made pain au chocolat and they were both delicious. But this is my first time making Danish pastry. And I, I don't think I've ever made puff pastry. I suppose maybe that should be next, huh? Because I do love using puff pastry. I just usually cheat and buy it already made. <laughs> This guy folded up and back in the fridge. Probably if you get a different piece of plastic, but you know what? Use what I have already here. It's fine. <laughs> Actually, so let me just show you. This is the one that we've already done several times. This one we just did. Look at the difference in how puffy it is because it's raised so much. I didn't really, I mean, like I said, it did this when I did the um, croissant dough too, but I wasn't, I don't know, I just didn't expect it to do that. All right, so actually first we should probably get a pan with some parchment paper. I have already preheated the oven um, it calls for 400 degrees, so I'm doing 415 here just because of our elevation. It helps to have the oven up just a tiny bit hotter. This pan is actually a little warm because it is stored under the oven, and I don't want it to like prematurely melt any of the butter, so I'm gonna stick this in the freezer while I roll this out. to six by 12 inch rectangle. All right, sounds easy enough. Although that doesn't sound very big, does it? Um, how do I wanna do this? This way? All right, we'll do it this way. Six inches, 12 inches. So we let this rest again after uh, rolling it out and braiding it and everything. Um, and she says that it won't double in size, but I don't know, I feel like it's going to. I will say it's interesting to see that you can't see any of those like butter pieces anymore. I hope that's not a bad thing. That's probably six inches. I shouldn't do that any further. What did I say? 20? 20 inches? 12 inches? 12. <laughs> wow, that doesn't seem very big. Mm. I'm going to do, do it bigger. I feel like they would just be really bready at that size. I should put it on my pan before I cut the little braiding strips. So my pan should be cool now. Yeah. It didn't need much. It just needed to not be warm. <laughs> Okay, 
So if we call the center like this, maybe. Yeah. Oh, we're supposed to cut them on the diagonal. Probably making this too small. I seem to be making them smaller as I go along. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, well, it's not quite even. This has 22, that has 23, but I think it'll be okay. All right, let's get our lemon curd on there. I just put this extra layer of saran wrap on top so to protect against um, what you call it freezer burn. I'm going to be pretty uh, generous with this. Nobody likes chintzy filling. You know what? I'm just going to use it all. And it might squirt out all over the place. That's fine. Because I don't have any other use for it, so might as well use it. Oh, it smells so good. It literally smells like summer. <laughs> so nice. Okay, I'll wash my hand really quick, and then we will attempt to braid this. <laughs> All right, I don't think I've ever done this before. So, I feel like you f would fold up the first side. Mm, this seems really thick though. it decorative. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. Uh, this way? Mm -hmm. Let's try to make the... If, you, if anybody has done this before and knows how to do this, I'd love to hear. I mean, it's kind of making a braid, right? I don't know. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing something here. Maybe it goes like that. No. It doesn't really work either. No, nope, that's just what we're going to do. No, because the braiding looks cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> um. I think I did too many strips. But that's okay. We live and we learn, right? Next one will be prettier. No, no, that's... I definitely feel like this is like way too much dough for a single braid too. Like I said, like six by 12 and I definitely rolled it out thicker than that. I guess we shall see. I mean, it can't be bad, right? It's a whole bunch of butter and lemon curd. 
then let's do one more on this end. All right, well, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's not the prettiest thing ever, but hopefully. I'm also a little concerned like that these are gonna pop up as they cook. Because there's nothing really like gluing them down. Maybe I'll try and get them into the curd of it. And that will kind of like glue them. I don't know. Making this up, you guys. Making it up. Her instructions were not very clear. Clearly, this is like way more <laughs> down here. And these, I don't know. Okay, well, we are now going to let this sit for 30 minutes. Did she say refrigerate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, three quarter inch intervals. Those are probably more like quarter inch intervals. Okay, well, fine. And fold strips over the filling in a crisscross manner, blah, blah, blah. Let dough rise for 15 to 30 minutes until pastry appears puffy. It will not double in size. All right, so let's let this hang out here for 15, 20 minutes and see what happens. All right, it's been about 25 minutes or so and I'm thinking this looks puffy, <laughs> I guess. So the last thing that we do before um, putting it in the oven is to do a little egg wash. So just an egg, and there was a, like, I don't know, two tablespoons of water in there or something like that. Actually, so this is my frother for my milk for my coffee in the mornings. But um, I was reading today, somebody was like, yeah, I use it to whip up a couple of eggs or, and I'm like, wow, that's brilliant. Why have I never done that? instead of trying to do it with a fork. Look, at, it's like so much faster and amazing. <laughs> I don't know why I've never thought of this before. All right. Yeah, excited about the little things, folks. So we're just gonna brush this on and get her in the oven. You're supposed to sprinkle it with Pearl sugar or almonds. I guess I could sprinkle it with just sugar because I don't have either of those things. Well, and if you eat, I would never do almonds. I'm not a big nut fan in general. And I think one of the kind of traditional fillings for this is like a marzipan filling, which is why the almonds would make sense. And like the glaze that you're supposed to put on it is supposed to have almond extract, which I would love I love almond extract taste, but David is not a big fan, so. And honestly, I don't think it would, again, would go very well with lemon curd, so. All right. Let's, no, not salt. Let's not sprinkle it with salt. That would be a terrible idea. Put a little bit of sugar. Because remember, this dough didn't have, it only had a half, no, a quarter of a cup for two of these things. So the dough is really not very sweet at all. All right. Let's put this not very pretty guy into the oven. Fingers crossed, this actually does what it's supposed to do and laminates. All right. Let's see how it goes. So um, I believe it's uh, 15, 20 minutes. So I will check it at 15. In the meantime, I will do another one of the uh, roll and folds for the other dough. Um, that will only be my second one, right? Yeah, second one. So I'll need to do one more after that. Um, but, and then we will stick that one in the freezer. So we will come back when this is coming out of the oven. Keep your fingers crossed for me.
timer has gone off. Let us see what we have come up with here. I'm thinking it is good. I actually did put it in for two minutes longer than it called for. I don't know. I'm ouch, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna do just a quick temperature check to make sure that the dough is actually cooked all the way. Oh, no, it is not. No, that's only 137, so. Yeah, and even the ends aren't quite cooked. Okay, so it's getting a little brown, on a little too brown on some of the tops. So I'm gonna put a piece of foil over it and then we'll put it back into the oven for probably another five, five-ish minutes. oven for a while. I think it looks not pretty at all, <laughs> but uh, I think it will be edible. So there's that. Oh, and I dripped lemon all over the place. Um, I'm going to cut it like, there we go. All right. Well, yeah, I think probably it needed to cook a little bit longer. You can see that that's a little doughy. Shoot. Mm. Tastes good though. Mm. <laughs> Yum. But I want to taste just the pastry. So let's take a, this little guy here. I mean, there's definitely layers. You can, you can see. And it, like here, that's perfect lamination right there. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. You can definitely taste that there's egg in it which makes it really different from the croissant taste. <coughs> <coughs> Just inhaled a piece of flaky dough. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think next time I make it, well, first of all, I need to make the strips a little bit wider so they aren't like all piled up, <clears throat> excuse me, piled up on each other and probably bake it a bit longer. Although I'm not really sure how to tell like when it's done because the bottom is all nice and crispy and the top is all nice and golden brown. But again, I do think that it was just too much dough in general. So <clears throat> maybe the next time I make it, I'll cut it in half and do that size braid, but with half the dough. I think that probably would fix any of these issues. Mmm, so good though. And the lemon curd. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this is our dough that I did the final um, fold and turn on. So it's just going to go into the freezer. <coughs> and we will enjoy snacking on this guy for a while. Might not be pretty, but it tastes very delicious. <clears throat> so I think, I mean, mostly successful. <laughs> Definitely the dough works. And um, like, I don't think, <clears throat> oh my goodness. I don't think it's necessary to do, like it was totally fine to do the method, the kind of cheat method of <clears throat> just doing the butter mixing it in with the flour until it's kind of like kidney size, kidney bean sized. But it would be interesting to try doing it like the more traditional way with slicing the butter into thin slices and then folding it and then doing all the turns and folds. 
So maybe next time we'll try that, but um, I think this was a lot of fun and a little taste of summer. So thanks so much for joining me, you guys. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. We have lots more adventures coming up for us and I will see you next time. Have a great night. Bye.